<laughs> you look wonderful, sir. You're doing your Mr. Rogers impersonation. Yeah, I got pretty your much. sweater on. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood, and I am wearing a very comfortable sweater. Thank you. I was so hoping Tom Hanks would win for that. I love that movie. thought it was great. I, and he was up for supporting? Yeah, because it, the way the movie is set up, and he is actually the supporting actor. Okay. It's an, it's, I, I really yet, like so. it. It's a good movie. Well, there you go. Let's talk uh, markets. Yep. A little caution there? Yeah, a little bit. And it's specifically related to the oil trade, uh, Roger. So we'll be tracking the price for uh, gas again this week. Yeah. Uh, coronavirus has oil below $50 a barrel U.S. because demand in China has dropped off substantially here. Oil's been down five weeks in a row. It's down 20% since the start of the year. Uh, so that's pretty substantial when you think about it. And um, the issue has been, obviously, the slowdown in business business activity in China, although uh, some companies, including Samsung and some of the big automakers, are starting to restart their plant production in China over the next couple of days. So that might just tip the balance back a little bit in the near term. Uh, otherwise, markets are fairly cautious and, and calm this morning. Uh, last week was actually a bit of a surprise considering how strong mm -hmm. the TSX and the U.S. benchmarks were. The Dow is up by 3% percent over five days. Uh, we don't typically wow. see that, but uh, again, earnings have been good, interest rates are low, there might even be more monetary stimulus, a whole bunch of things at play here, sending stock prices up. And the, uh, what's the, what kind of an impact is oil having here? Well, the we price seeing? for gas, it's what, a buck ten? Yeah. And it can fill up uh, late in the night, uh, late in the evening for, you know, below a dollar per liter. So it has, you know, fluttered down a little bit. Uh, for consumers. So, uh, yeah, it does have a ripple effect. And again, you look out west and the Canadian benchmark is much below the U.S. price. And, the, and that's just going to net the economy, specifically in Alberta, which is already struggling with lots of uh, unemployment and uh, uh, weak economic uh, expectations. All right, one more quickly before we go. Uh, BA, a flight from New York to <laughs> London under five hours and it wasn't a Concorde. No, it wasn't. The Concorde top speed was 1,300 miles per hour back in the day. Uh, this 747 uh, flown by British Airways had this massive tailwind going across the pond from uh, winter storm Chiara, which hit uh, Europe over the weekend and delayed a lot of flights. But they're saying this plane was reaching a ground speed of more than 800 miles per hour, oh. did it in four hours, 56 minutes. And the passengers were probably even unaware that it was going on because it's actually a smooth, uh, relatively smooth when you've got a tailwind. Coming back the other way, it was two it was... hours longer, <laughs> as you might expect, headwinds, right? Yeah. But Virgin Atlantic was throwing shade because they said, well, because they got beat by a, a minute by the British Airways flight. Yeah. So they were going back and forth on social media and British Airways, wow, that's a 747. It's got four engines and our plane only has two and we're much more fuel efficient, blah, 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 blah. So they were kind of going back, oh and, my goodness. back and forth a little that bit on this. Insane, though. Yeah, well, well, guys, you're, they're hitting the air brakes, oh, trying to slow things down yeah, a little we're bit. We're just going to have to circle for an hour to get you in on time. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you very much, sir. Have a great you. day. Yep.